Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, and oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation. of God and he was born of his spirit and washed in his blood this is my story this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. perfect delight those visions of rapture now burst on my sight oh angels descending they bring from up above visions of love and this is my story this is my song oh praising my Savior all the day long Praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior all the day long. Hello, Madeline Choir and all who are watching. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. How comforting it is to hear those words as we are still in the midst of this pandemic and the uncertainty of our post-pandemic world. So life goes on. I love the month of May. It is a time when we have glimpses of nice weather, the geraniums are out, gardens are going in, and everything comes alive again. It's also the month that we celebrate our mothers and the Blessed Virgin Mary. For me, the two go hand in hand. My mom, of course, taught me to say the rosary at a very young age, and it seemed that even then we had rosaries all over the house. 
Do you recall the first time that you said a rosary? I do. My earliest memory was when I was about 10 and my horse, whom I dearly loved, nearly died. I was so distraught that I ran upstairs to my room and said my rosary over and over, praying that he would live. Well, not only did he live, but he and I were best friends for the next 20 plus years. And it seems that after that day, whenever I needed comfort in my life, I have picked up my rosary. So it is no wonder that saying a daily rosary has become part of our shelter at home life. You will notice that I am sitting next to an almost life-size statue, for me anyway, of Mary. My mother carried this back with her on a plane. This is before you had to pay for an extra seat for oversized baggage. Over 30 years ago, from Medjugorje in Bosnia-Herzegovina, on one of her earliest Marian pilgrimages, it's one of her most precious possessions. As is typical of the statues depicting Our Lady of Medjugorje, her arm is outstretched as if to welcome or invite everyone into her heart and back to God. So this statue stands firmly in our entry, welcoming everyone into our home. You will also notice that hanging on her arm are many rosaries. These are my mom's most special rosaries. They all have a story and they are literally from all over the world. Don't worry, she has plenty more where these came from. And if she feels you need extra prayers, and you are very lucky, my mother will look through her treasure trove of rosaries and find just the right one to give to you. You know, I'm blessed that I was able to accompany my mom on many of her pilgrimages as she brought pilgrims to Holy Marian sites throughout the world for almost 40 years. Believe me, we've said a lot of rosaries. And while the rosary can be a solitary devotion, I have found it most beautiful and meaningful when praying it together with thousands of people, no social distancing, and surrounded by many different languages. Of course, the main prayer of the devotion is the centuries-old Hail Mary, which incorporates two phrases from the Gospel of Luke. So whether you hear the words, here, Hail Mary, full of grace, Ave Maria, piena di grazia, or Zdravo Maria, milo si puna. This ancient prayer is melodious in any language. And so to me, there's nothing more powerful than when these thousands of voices unite together in singing the Latin refrain, Ave Maria, between each decade of the rosary. And we all know that Latin is indeed the universal language of the church. What more proof do we need in this instance that singing is praying twice, or in this case, a thousandfold? So it's no wonder that composers have been setting the text to the Ave Maria for centuries. There's a natural rhythm to the text that just lends itself to music. So traditionally, we hear a setting of the Ave Maria at weddings, and funerals, as well as throughout the month of May. I have my favorites, of course, including ones by Caccini, Victoria, Rachmaninoff, Bach, Guno, and even Schubert. But there's one that reminds me of saying the rosary as a child. I first heard it years ago, slightly out of tune, yet belted out by 10,000 or more people on one of our pilgrimages to Medjugorje. Because I never really knew the title or where it came from, I just call it the Medjugorje song. I really don't know why I like it so much. I mean, the tune is pretty. It's not as grand as Rachmaninoff's or as sublime as Caccini's or as famous as Schubert's. It's not even really a full-blown Ave Maria, even though it uses some of the Latin text in the refrain. It's just a simple, childlike prayer to Mary. And because every time I hear this song, I think about my mom and Mary. And for me, the two go hand in hand. Thank you. 
Thank you. I'm grateful to be here. Today I want to talk to you about two things, just two, gratitude and focusing on the basics. Gratitude. Every morning I have a friend and he has an email waiting for me in my inbox every morning or I'm in a Zoom meeting with him first thing in the morning and he asks the same question each day of me and of everyone else around him. What do you have to be grateful for? Tell me something that you are grateful for today. And it's a good question because when he asked that, my life began to change. And in these difficult times, it was easy to focus on all the things that were not right with me. But when I asked what I had to be grateful for, my view changed 180 degrees. I realized my list of hardships is short and trivial, where my list of blessings is long and wonderful. I think of it all. I have food. I have water. I have shelter. I have heat. I have light. I even have a high-speed internet connection that's really stable and reliable. My car starts every time I go out to it. I have a lot of things to be grateful for. The list goes on endlessly. Gratitude. Sunday, Father Mike in his homily mentioned focusing on the basics. And all of us who have played sports or been involved in any other human endeavor have had that time when we've had to focus on the basics. In the Bible, the G Jesus asks a young man or rather, Jesus is asked by a young man, what's the greatest commandment? And it's a sincere question. And our Lord Jesus answered, and I'm rather inclined to agree with him, there are just two commandments, love God and love your neighbor. And admittedly, I paraphrase a bit here. So love God. Well, you knew I was going to talk about the rosary. You knew that was going to happen. And our lives are busy especially with this coronavirus crisis, when are we going to find the time to say five Our Fathers and 50 Hail Marys? Well, 
for many of us, with all of the demands in our life, we're not going to be able to find that time. But there's great value in at least taking whatever moment we have and saying an Our Father or saying a Hail Mary. It's only two sentences long. Or maybe take many moments and at least say the opening phrase from each prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Or Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Maybe Google the phrase Mysteries of the Rosary. You'll find plenty of Catholic websites and other Christian websites that have the Mysteries of the Rosary and even have suggestions on them. But really, just read through them and take a moment and meditate on each of them by themselves. They're so short, they're so brief, and a meditation is so simple. Uh, you can do this in 50 seconds. Neighbor. In these times, one thing I find really disconcerting is having a masked person approach me. Actually, I find it even more disconcerting in these times to have an unmasked person approach me. But either way, it's different now. And there's an element of fear and uncertainty. Does this person have the coronavirus? Are they going to infect me? It's hard to tell. And I find frequently I have to pause and remind myself, 97% of the people out there are good. They're decent. They're hardworking, honest, upstanding people. And they're all trying to do the right thing, not just for themselves and their family, but for everyone around them. And when you realize that, you realize, oh my goodness, the odds are much greater. They're many times greater that that person approaching me is part of the solution and not part of the problem. Be grateful for that person. And if you could take a moment and give them a cheerful good morning or hello, miss, or hello, sir, or any polite greeting, do that. And that's what I came out to say. Be grateful, focus on the basics, love God, love your neighbor. And I encourage all of you to do this. God bless all of you and have a great day. As I reflect on my mother today, I want to begin by asking you this question. What gifts has God given you that you generously, often without even thinking, continually give away? That question came to my mind as I thought about the life of my mother. She generously gave away her love of music and her generous time. She always had time to listen, time to talk, and time to make someone feel better. She was humble, kind, caring, had a fun-loving personality, a great sense of humor, and an unwavering faith in God. She was born on Easter Sunday, the seventh child in a family of 11 children. She was appropriately named Maria Magdalena. Her father was a Lutheran pastor in the town of Walla Walla, Washington, the town where my mother spent most of her life. As a young girl, her parents recognized her talent and love of music and somehow they found enough money for her to take piano lessons. Now she had no dreams of becoming a concert pianist, but spent her life enriching the lives of others by sharing her love of music. When her father was a chaplain at the state penitentiary, she would go with him on Sundays and play for their worship service. Now, when I was a young child, it seemed like family and friends we're always gathering around the piano in our living room, singing the popular current songs and harmonizing to favorite hymns. From the time I was three years old, my mother would let me accompany her to the local nursing home 
or the poor farm. I would sit on the piano bench next to her while she played and sang with the residents. When I grew older, she invited my friends to join us. She would teach us a few songs and we would perform as special entertainment. Eventually, she began directing the children's choir at our church, which she did for 25 years. Throughout her lifetime, she not only shared her love of music, but she shared her gift of time. She always had time to talk on the phone with her sisters every morning. And neighbors and friends all knew if they knocked on the back door, she would greet them, invite them in, and they would sit at the kitchen table, drink coffee, eat a few cookies, and talk, and listen, and just be together. My best conversations with her took place at the kitchen sink while we did the evening dishes together. She was always aware of the people in her life who were alone and could use a little conversation and cheering up. Now, after my brother and I left home, she spent even more time visiting the homebound and transporting her friends and family who didn't drive. She did all of these things with a happy heart. You know, I recently came across this quote from Bishop Robert Barron. Happiness is never a function of filling oneself up. It is a wonderful function of giving oneself away. You know, I think without even realizing it, my mother spent most of her lifetime giving away the gifts that God had given her. So I say, how about you? Can you identify the gifts that God has given you? If you can, are you using them? Maybe now would be a really good time. Who do you know that could use the gifts that you've been given? Ask God to guide you. Now, I want to add a little postlude to my reflection, which will introduce our closing song. When I was six years old, my father died of polio. The year that followed his death, and before my mother remarried, was a time when my mother and I were very close. I guess we needed each other. She would often let me spend the night with her in her big bed. I have tender memories of snuggling under her beautiful pink and green satin quilt. As I waited for sleep to overtake me, I could hear her playing the piano and softly singing the love songs that she had shared with my father. Eventually, she would sing and play the old hymns that gave her comfort and peace. Usually, she would end with this hymn that is familiar to all of you. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. So that's number 575 in your CP3. Please sing along with Michael and Maria. I miss you. I love you. Take care of yourselves and generously give your gifts away. Thank you.
Hello, dear friends. My thoughts and prayers are with you tonight. Would you please join me in our choir prayer? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless, O Lord, us your people, who minister in your holy temple. Grant that what we sing with our lips, we may believe in our hearts, and what we believe in our hearts, we may show forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Saint Mary Magdalene, pray for us.